James, uh, in addition to Rand Paul, I don't know if you can see this. I'm going to try to hold this up. These are the other people that I interviewed. I spoke to a regional director for economic development there, and, and of course, we wanted to discuss how important of, of uh, benefit the uh, Rock Castle Shooting Center and the Park Mammoth Resort can be for the surrounding area in terms of uh, generating revenues in a hard-pressed economy. Uh, I, I spoke with a real nice judge there. We actually sat down for half an hour and shared our life stories. The folks were so good. They were so easy to talk to. They were such salt-of-the-earth people. I spoke with a lot of the athletes. I, I spoke with uh, two of the first-place finishers in the open and the uh, open standard division, or the, the manual division. And, uh, you know, I talked with a lot of the IROA officials. These are the, the international range officers, people from all over the world, uh, athletes, officials, uh, had some nice conversations, not on camera. They were all more than willing to sit down with us and talk with us and just chat and have good conversations. And we got to know each other. It was quite an experience. And I want to thank you for sending me there, James. It, it was quite a stretch. As, as you know, I basically do political type commentary and I, I stay away from the sports. By the same token, we who are in the political arena and the gun rights arena also have to recognize that if we are going to continue to expand our efforts, we are going to draw our advocates from the pool of shooters. Right. And I found to a man, the American team, dead on in terms of understanding the Second Amendment. I found people from all over the world very interested in protecting their right to shoot. And it was just an incredible experience all the way through. Yeah, I would think that probably some of the people from some of the other countries uh, are still probably looking at the United States to see what they are going to do or possibly looking up to the United States, hoping one day they could achieve some of the freedoms that we have. I, I spoke with just this wonderful father-daughter team from the United Kingdom, uh, Josie and Robert Adam. I spoke with uh, people from Estonia. I spoke with uh, the uh, Italian team. I, I met a wonderful bunch of guys, the Canadian team. Spoke with the Brazilians and, and uh, you know, because we're, we're talking about Pan American games and wanted to make sure that we got the South American representatives as well as the Canadian representatives. Everyone, even though their English was, was sometimes, uh, you know, making them a little hesitant to want to come on camera, when they did, I believe they were glad. I was certainly glad. I met nothing but the nicest, most salt-of-the-earth people down there. Oh. And uh, I don't want to forget Linda Chico, who is the match director. I've never seen a more hardworking individual in my life. I, I think they kind of look to her like a big sister. Uh, she has the respect and a lot of affection from everyone that I spoke with. And again, everyone, including her, including the, the nobles, they were all very approachable. They were all very cordial. They were all very willing to share with us. And it was just from a human aspect, forget shooting sports. It was an incredibly rewarding experience. Yeah, well, you know, we got to get you out of the office more often. And it sounds like you might have had a good time down there. <laughs> I actually had a good time. You know, James, uh, you, you, you were right. They, they are hectic days. Uh, you know, I, I'd never done anything like this before. Uh, they, they, they were 12, 14-hour days easy, and they were busy. And, of course, you know there's a lot of hurry up and wait. Sometimes there's a little bit of frustration because, you know, you only have the, the, the camera guys are, are doing what they're doing. And, you know, you might want to interview somebody. And, you know, that, right. that's just the nature of the way things go. I uh, heard a little bit of your intro earlier in the program, and I'm going to do what I can to try to encourage people to see this DVD because I think it's really, by, by the time director Chris Ward puts this all together, it's going to convey a lot of excitement. I know I went out there with him and with the camera guy, Ross Peterson, and, uh, you know, helped in some cases place the spider cam. And viewers, you're going to see angles that you're not used to seeing. You're going to see it looks like the shooters are going right for the targets and the targets exploding in the fore screen. Uh, you know, Gretchen is, what, what, a, what a charmer she is. You know, she, she made up for my lack of social skills. You know how friendly and approachable she is. 
and everybody there just loved her. So it was a terrific experience all the way around. Yeah, well, we're going to have a lot to show on this. I know we're going to do it over a series of many shows because this event, and I think we discussed this once before, this event hadn't really been done in this country before at this level. So when we say shotgun event here, I know many people are thinking in their mind it's a skeet, trap, sporting clays, but in fact, it really didn't have a lot to do with that. They were using uh, birdshot, buckshot, and slugs. And, mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, there were, I understand, some 30 stations uh, that rotated through there. And it was a pretty exciting and very aggressive sport. I would love to see it become more of a spectator sport with people actually following their, their favorite players, if you will, like they do in golf. Because I, I think that it has so much potential. And it's like the Rock Castle Shooting Center itself. The place I saw one news account refer to it as a diamond in a rough. That's true. Uh, it's an older place. The Nobles, uh, you know, Nick and Nate, Father Jim, uh, their partner, uh, Major, uh, Major General Humble of the U.S. Marine Corps, retired. All of these people are so committed. James, I've stayed at a lot of places in my life. I've never stayed at a place where the leadership, the top management, makes it their personal business to pay attention to every detail and to be cordial and welcoming. I've, I've never felt so welcome at any place that I've ever stayed at. And it wasn't just to us because we were representing the media. I would see them go around and talking and getting on with everybody and making sure that people had what they needed and seeing what they could do to expedite or to help if anything was required. And there is a vision to this place. And, you know, they have like 2,000 acres. They have uh, uh, Nick Noble took us on a tour of the place, showed us some caves, showed us a lookout point. And you just see the potential that this place has to be a magnet for that area. And it just, I wish them all the best. I want to do whatever I can to help publicize what they're doing in their area because it's bigger than just them and their business. It, it is a benefit to the entire area. I also want to do what I can to help promote the sport, the IPSC events in general. Again, you know, these, these are people from all over the world who come together. We see people who have, they're, they're athletes. These people have power. These people have grace. These people have discipline. Um, it's just amazing to watch some of them at work. They are just so proficient at what they do and yet with all the competition with the personal competition to want to be best with the team competition to want to represent your country the bottom line was they all came together as shooters and there wasn't a person there who wouldn't do anything for any other person there I, I was talking to one of the Estonian range officers and it took me a while to recognize where he was from because he was wearing a shirt from Germany and I said well what, what, what are you doing with the shirt from Germany and he said, well, it's a tradition that we have. We exchange shirts with the other guys as a souvenir. And I thought, how cool is that? It was just great, James. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I got an email from you, David, and it said that you had so much fun that you were actually going to bring your family back and, and try to partake of, of some of what uh, Rock Castle Resort has. Yes, not, and not just Rock Castle Resort, but also the surrounding area. You know, they're right next to the Mammoth National Park right. and the big caverns that are there. I've never seen them, and, and I would dearly love to. I, I'm sure that my family would enjoy it as well. And uh, so, yeah, you know, it's, it's something that if I had had the time to avail myself of it, uh, you know, I, I would have loved to, but unfortunately... You know, we're in a situation where you know how it is on these shoots. There are, there are long days, and at the end of it, you know what? If you can sit down in an easy chair at night and light a cigar, life is good. <laughs> David, I know it was very exciting, and I know we're going to have footage on this. The crew is not even back yet, actually. Uh, they left, uh, I think, the same day you did, and, and then they took a left turn somewhere, and now they're in Costa Rica. I don't know where they are.